cathedrals are amazing monuments that showcase technology and art that had existed in the past. They instantly transport us back into history. None visiting a cathedral can stop ruminating over the wonderful structures, the people who built them, and the purpose for which they were created over many days after the visit. My visit to the Litchfield Cathedral, located north of Birmingham, has been no different. Most of the cathedrals in England were under monastic control. During the reign of Henry VIII, these monasteries were dismantled and their structures demolished. Cathedrals affiliated to the Church of England were built often at a new venue. The fate of the Litchfield Cathedral was different. It was not only spared but was restored and renovated upon again and again to become the gigantic structure that we see today. It was not, not demolished by the forces of Henry VIII because it was not under the control of any particular monastic order. Monastic orders such as the Benedictines and Cistercians owned huge tracts of land and were the de facto rulers surrounding the area of the abbey, controlling the faithful thanks to their spiritual and material power over them. In order to consolidate his power over England, Henry VIII took over the land that were under the control of various monasteries, defrogged the monks and demolished the monasteries. Saint Chard is credited to have founded the Litchfield Cathedral in 670 CE after he was made the Bishop of Litchfield at the request of the King of Mercia. Saint Chard was one of the four brothers from the same family who became clerics. His brother said also became a saint. Saint Bede writes that six days before his death, Saint Chard had seen some angels arriving to take his soul to heaven. This story became part of the mythology associated with Litchfield. He was buried in a different church, but later his remains were brought to this cathedral which now holds his name. Eight bones supposedly belonging to him are held in a bejeweled container. The cathedral also holds many other holy relics. In 1345, the sacristan of the cathedral made a list of the relics held in the church. The list included part of the mounds of Calvary and Golgotha, bones of saints Stephen and Saint James, wood from the true cross of Jesus, part of the cross on which Saint Peter was hanged, some relics of the innocents, part of the sepulchre of Mother Mary and many others. The frontage of the cathedral has 113 figures. These are of angels, prophets from the Old Testament, the apostles, Mother Mary, many saints including Saint Chad, many archbishop of the Diocese of Litchfield and the numerous kings of the Kingdom of Mercia. Every year thousands of pilgrims traveled hundreds of miles to experience the miraculous power of the relics. One can imagine the mental condition of the pilgrims. They must have been preparing for months through fasting and prayer and penance. 
as the pilgrims approach the cathedral they confront the saints and other heavenly dwellers on the frontage of the cathedral elevated by seeing the statues of the heavenly dwellers the pilgrims enter the cathedral and approach the various relics in reverence surrounded by the various stained glass windows that depict the life of Christ the pilgrims are transported to the heavens for a few moments and like and are likely to feel one's mission in life is completed he or she would return home determined to pray more pay more and obey more intensively the bishops and priests and thus achieve self actualization the cathedral also displays the decorated gospels known as saint charles gospels these gospels were created 50 years after the death of saint chad the abundance of relics made the lichfield cathedral an important place of pilgrimage for christians of europe for many many centuries but today nobody comes here in search of miracles or cure or to be transported to the heavens people come here to wonder at the architecture and the arts displayed here the story of the changing fortunes of the gods and saints of this cathedral tells us an important commonality in the nature of humans and gods both have an expiry date the gods and saints who worked miracles yesterday have become helpless today no doubt the powers of gods and saints are determined by humans and their material circumstances gods and religions did play a very important role in the history of humanity as an organizing principle today they play a very different role in the advanced countries they are relics of the past something that raises our curiosity not our respect and veneration